Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. You're watching Drakewing Gaming. Oh, one moment. And... Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drakewing Gaming. It's if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus, Rune's Path. So, the last place we left off was we were in the woods with Klaus. So... Let's see what that turns into. Are we going to get another meeting with Werewolf Daddy? I would really love to know more about that, but I'm going to save that for Klaus's, uh, Klaus's run. I don't, I don't want to get too much into that mystery element, because I know that plays a big part in his, uh, in, his, in his route. So anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Sit back and enjoy. All right. Alarm Chan, you are being activated. Okay. I'm Carvin, studying cognitive science. I'm really happy to be on this camp. I'm a freshman, so it's my first one. I'm Klaus. It was nice meeting you. Bye. And just like that, he turns around and continues walking down the path. Okay, that was weird. I haven't seen him before, but he must have come with us, so likely it's not the last time we meet. Wait, where is he? I only blinked and he disappeared from my view completely, and I'm left alone. I might head back to the guest house. I don't even know if I want to find it, to be honest. Trying to talk with him didn't really go well before, so why should it now? I walk around the forest some more, enjoying the serene scenery before heading back to the guest house. No, Miko, okay. I walk around the guest house aimlessly for a while, and my paws lead me to the residential area. Suddenly I realize that I'm standing in front of the door to Miko's room. Miko invited me for a visit, and what's a better time than now? All I have to do is knock on the door, and I'll be greeted by my, by my school friend again. It takes me a few seconds of hesitation before I finally do it. Just a moment. I can faintly hear Miko's voice from behind the door. Hey, buddy boy. I don't have to wait long. After several seconds, the door opens and Miko's smiling face greets me. Oh, it's you, Carvin. Good to see you. I enter the room and he closes the door after me. The whole floor is cluttered with a multitude of cables and boxes filled with blinking lights. They are arranged in a semicircle, and there is a pillow on the floor in front of them. The room itself has the same furnishing as mine, apart from having twin beds instead of just one, yet thanks to the drawn curtains and all the gear it has a completely different feel. Oh, wow. Miko, did you really bring all that with you? Where did you even fit it? Miko just smiles, completely ignoring my question, and gives me a quick welcome hug. One second, guys. Allergies. I'm just finishing work on a track. I have to work on the drum pattern. It sounds a bit too repetitive at the moment. He returns to his instruments, sitting back on the floor in front of all the gear. He presses a button and the music starts to play from a small speaker he has on a desk. I watch, mesmerized, as various lights pulse in rhythm with the song. You can sit here with me if you want. He moves himself to the side of the huge pillow so that there is space for two on it. Oh, sure. I sit down next to him, leaning against him out of necessity. He leans on me too, and I can feel the heat radiating from his small body. The music fills the room slowly, transforming the space around us, bubbly sounds reverberating through the wooden floor. I close my eyes and let the room become our vessel, in which we travel through imaginary landscapes. Next to me, Miko continues to work on the track, playing around with the gear in front of him. What are you doing exactly? I'm using the groove box's built-in option, which lets me trigger only a, para a, param a parametrized percentage of notes so that the pattern is partially randomized, including some variation into it. Introducing some variation into it. I'm also manipulating samples to get the sound I want, and I'm trying different timings with the pattern itself too. I do everything on this proton groove box. I only have to program MIDI signals to communicate with the rest of the gear here. I have two external synthesizers, because this Proton has only a sampler built in, and a few effect pedals that I like to use, and of course a mixer for all that. I nod, pretending to understand. Miko turns his head, looking at me. So, Carvin, what's up? Enjoying the trip? I, uh, was, I was just walking around the guest house and thought that I might visit you. I didn't expect you to be working on music now, hope I'm not bothering. And, well, I lost a key to my room, so I'm kind of without one for now. Most of my things are there, so I'm not really happy with that. Oh, what are you going to do now? I went to the front desk and asked them the same question. Let's say that for now, I don't know yet. I'm 
Um, sure. He finally seems happy with the result and stops the track. Okay, I think I'm done. So, what do you think of the track? I like it. I like what I've heard so far. Can you play it again? He clicks He clicks something on one of the synths and the track starts playing again. It makes me feel like I'm sitting on a cloud and looking at the colorful patches of the ground below. There's purple, green, and yellow, and some turquoise too. The land moves beneath a the land moves but blah. The land moves What the fuck is wrong with my with my with my mouth? The land moves below us slowly, and from time to time we fly into some other pink clouds. No, no, it's midnight, and the full moon floods the path with a silvery glow. But there's definitely turquoise and purple. You're right. I forgot that Miko has a slight synesthesia. He, so he literally sees music as colors. Or at least he says so. In any case, I like it a lot. Miko gives me a, small, gives me a smile, blushing slightly. Thanks! I've started working on it here. I want it to, in a way, be a snapshot of what I felt in the bus on our way here, looking at the views and daydreaming. I remember you always liked the idea of documenting everything around you. He suddenly looks away from me, focusing his gaze somewhere outside the window. You know, about your room... If you need a place to stay, then you could always stay here. His voice trails off, as if he changed his mind in the middle of the sentence, and the words, came out, and the words come out really quiet. Uh, sorry, I didn't hear you well. He gulps and looks back at me with determination. If you need a place to stay, you're always welcome here. I've decided to wait on any decisions until the evening, so I'm not going to make any declarations now. But it's nice knowing that I have a place where I can stay. That's much appreciated, Miko. It's great to have you as a friend. I mean it. He still looks at me, waiting for a response. It's an option. I don't want to make a declaration now because maybe someone will find the key or something else unexpected will happen. Miko nods. He doesn't really seem to be happy with the response, though. Sure. An uncomfortable silence falls on us. Miko looks down in his gear and starts to fidget with the knob, making some small adjustments to the sound. Hey, uh, maybe I'll go now. I can still visit you later. Miko turns, his, Miko turns his face to me as if snapped out of a daze. Meanwhile, I've stood up already and took a few backward steps to the door. Oh, sure. <sighs> maybe you would like to go for a walk? I haven't been in a forest in quite a long time. Yeah. After dinner, maybe? Sounds good to me. See you later. I wave to him and leave the room. Why did I wave to him? Well, that was awkward. But when he asked if I want to stay with him, I didn't want to decline him, but in his eyes I could see that he really was really excited for that idea. I hope I didn't make him sad. I still have time to make the decision, though, and I can spend time with him regardless. It was nice, this brief visit. I haven't heard his music in a long time. I didn't follow him online after we split up. Hell yeah! Gonna see some men! Mmm! What the fuck's wrong with me? Swimming pool. Rune told me to look for him and Devin there. I haven't been in one in ages. It's really cool that our guest house has one. I didn't expect such luxuries when I first heard about the camp. Looks like there's a joint locker room for both the sauna and swimming pool, which is pretty common. Garvin! Rune is standing in the locker room, shirtless. He smiles when he sees me entering, raising a paw to greet me. I stop in my tracks, standing in the locker room door, not expecting to walk in on a buff, bare-chested buck here. Heh. <laughs> what? See something you like? He leans on a locker, teasingly. God damn it! please, just don't get a nosebleed now! Um, hi there, Rune. Hey, don't be so serious, I'm just messing with you. He winks at me and continues to undress, taking off his trousers. Felt like swimming a few laps with us? Devin is already inside, if you're looking for him. Came to see you, big boy. Well, I was looking for you. I thought that maybe we could do something together. <laughs> you st no! Stop this! I can't take this! Here? In a locker room? <laughs> what do you mean by that something? Dad, swimming, mostly? <laughs> Mostly, you say? Hey, don't look at me like that. I'm still just joking. Okay, I can wait for you, unless you mind. I get a bit flustered at the thought of Rune watching me undress, but it's not like he wouldn't see me almost naked in the pool anyway. 
No, feel free to. I pick a free locker and put the jacket inside it, hanging it on a hook. I took my shoes off at the door and went in bear pod, so now I, so now I put them on the bottom of the locker. Only now I notice a distinct smell of chlorine that hangs in the air heavily. As I take a full lungful of it, I'm instantly flooded by a wave of memories from various swimming pools and locker rooms I've been in throughout my life. This one is fairly small, which is to be expected for a moderately sized guest house, with just around 15 lockers and two rows and two benches between them. Two of the lockers are taken by Rune and Coach, so it must be the only three of us here at the moment. I take off my shirt and trousers, folding it neatly and putting it on a shelf inside a locker, and then a sudden realization hits me. I look at Rune, who is doing some warm-up exercises, changed into swimwear already. He notices me looking and turns in my direction. What's up? I don't have any swimming shorts. Well, I do, but back at my room, and that doesn't help me much at the moment. Hmm. A devious smile appears on Rune's snout. I don't see a problem. There's no one beside us in here. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Are you suggesting... Rune winks at me, grinning. Well, why not? Hmm, it's good to do something crazy once in a while. And as Rune said, there's no one beside us here now anyway, and no one will probably come s and no one will probably come so soon before dinner. Oh, what the hell. I take off my underwear and throw it into the locker, on top of the rest of my clothes. For us fans, nudity is not something uncomfortable or weird. In fact, it's a normal part of our lives. I'm not sure if it's the same for Norwegians, but the fact that Rune even proposed that now would suggest so. I close the locker, leaving the key inside the lock. Okay. <clears throat> okay, ready now? Let's go. I nod and follow him to the showers. The tiled floor feels cold under my paws, so I hasten my steps to match those of Rune. There are no separate stalls, just one row of shower heads extending from the wall. We take two adjacent showers. I press the button and water starts pouring onto me. Ah, it's cold! Next to me, Rune starts showering too, rubbing liquid soap into his thick pelt. <laughs> the water could be warmer, but I don't want to miss the views while I can enjoy them. Discreetly, I take another curious glance at Rune, this time less concerned about being caught. There's nothing inappropriate in admiring such a physique anyway, is there? His fur clings to his body, soaked with water, which only makes the outlines of his muscles more prominent. He's really well built. And he must work out a lot, and it definitely shows. There's not much fat on him, but enough to make him look more bulky than ripped. The white fur on his belly looks smooth and soft. I look up at his snout. I don't know how old he is, but he looks as if he was no older than me. His antlers give him a distinguished look. I wonder how it would be to have a pair. I for sure would have to give up wearing sweaters. Rune turns towards me and our eyes meet for a split second, and we both look away. Was I just imagining things, or was he trying to take a peek at me too? Hey, were you just... checking me out? Gulp. Uh, so I was caught. Hey, don't get all flustered again. It's flattering. Yeah, you do look great. I wish I had, a, I, wish I had your build. I'm all skin and bones myself. <laughs> Got a bit lucky with my jeans. But I put a lot of work into myself too. Thanks, Garvin. And you look good too, you know. You're lean, not scrawny. You don't need to be ripped to be sexy. You're a handsome tiger. I blush under my fur. It feels nice to get a compliment from someone like Rune. Although, when you're blushing like that, I should rather say cute. I can feel my cheeks getting hotter. I think I prefer it handsome. We both finish showering and step out of the showers. My fur feels heavy with all the water it soaked up under the shower, but I don't bother doing anything with it. I'm jumping into the pool in a moment anyway. I leave the showers, leaving a trail of wet paw steps behind me. Ah, oh, God, I love this pool so much. The swimming pool looks fairly normal, aside from maybe the lighting. Two rows of lamps hang from the ceiling above the water, reflected in the glossy tiles. The walls opposite to the entrance is made entirely of windows, giving a view of the surroundings. The pool is fairly small, as hotel pools usually are, but it seems long enough to build up some speed before swimming the whole length. As Rune said, Coach is already here, standing near the windows and looking at the mountains visible in the distance. He turns around and notices us approaching. Hey there, Devin. Hello. And, um... Garvin. You didn't forget anything, did you? You know you're... Naked. Oh! Right. Even if Rune is Scandinavian, Coach isn't. 
I've heard that nudity is a much bigger deal in the U.S. than in Europe in general. Well, too late now. Ah, sorry, Professor. I've lost the key to my room. Coach raises an eyebrow, visibly taken aback. But I've sorted it out already. I have talked to the receptionist, and they asked me to move into another room for the night. All my stuff is locked back there, along with my swimwear. I forgot about that completely when I came here and started changing. It only hit me when I was al when I was already undressing. I was there with him, and I was there with him and suggested he could go skinny dipping. I see no harm in it. The whole guest house is ours, and it's unlikely that anyone else would come here before dinner. Hey, it's not a big problem for me if it's not a problem for you. And Rune. I thought you'd join me earlier. What took you so long? <laughs> I got sidetracked a bit. I started doing other things and completely lost track of time. Sorry. Well, it's okay. Just don't go slack off. Just don't slack off during this camp. I'll get back into the pool for a few more rounds. I'm going too. I want to do as many laps as I can before dinner. They both jump into the pool at the deeper end and start swimming. It looks like Coach is slightly faster than Rune. But then again, Rune only did a few warm-up exercises in the locker room, while Coach was already here for a while. Having antlers is definitely a disadvantage, too. It's funny seeing Rune fully submerged with only his antlers sticking out of the water in front of him. Despite those setbacks, they finished the first two lengths almost at the same time. I head towards the ladder to join them, too. I lean against the wall, panting loudly. I haven't been to a swimming pool for so long that I forgot how tiring it is. Sadly, I was no match for the other two. For every length that I swam, they easily did two or more. And I still managed to completely tire myself out. My stamina really is garbage. Phew! That was good. I really needed a good, tiring training like this. Now, I can go have a dinner. Or preferably two. Hey, Garvin, you okay? You look pretty worn out. I'm fine. Really, just tired. You're panting as if you just ran a marathon. You should definitely exercise more often. Well, sorry I'm not a goddamn professional basketball player like you, Rune. <laughs> no, I'm far from being a professional, Carbon. But thank you. Just give me a moment. Uh, catch my breath. It takes me a long moment to stabilize my breathing, but I finally stop panting and take a few deep breaths. Swimming looks deceptively easy. I thought I could just swim a few laps without any breaks, but now I feel like my lungs are on fire. You must be really out of shape then. No, oh, I know. How about we come here every day for the duration of the camp to exercise? You'll be swimming like a champ in no time. I will think about it. I don't know if I'm ready to go through this again anytime soon. No pressure, but I'm definitely coming for you tomorrow morning to drag you here. I groan and roll my eyes. I wouldn't mind spending some more time with him, though, and maybe it would be a good opportunity for that. And with such motivation, I might really work on my stamina. Okay, let's go back to the changing room and stop making Devin uneasy with your shameless nudity. I actually forgot that I'm butt naked right now. Great. Hey, don't feel self-conscious all of a sudden. You're Devin. It's fine. Now, come on, let's head back. Dinner should be served soon. We walk back to the showers together. Coach joins us as we leave the swimming pool. We three enter the showers and start washing all the chlorine-heavy water from our bodies. The water in the shower is no warmer now than it was before, but now it feels refreshing after all the swimming. I stand under a stream of water and my fatigue flows down with it, disappearing down the drain. We enter the changing room while soaking wet, but invigorated. Rune and Coach open their lockers and take out their towels. And that's when I, again, realize that I forgot about something fairly important. Um... Yes? Devin looks at me with concern. No wonder. I must be looking pretty lost right now. You know, I couldn't get my swimming shorts from my room, right? Well, I couldn't get my towel either. I have a spare one with me in my bag. That is, if you feel okay with using it. It's clean and unused, don't worry. He passes me the towel. Thank you, Coach. I feel a warm, glowy feeling inside my chest. If this happened back in high school, instead of getting some actual help from anyone, I would be made fun of for weeks. No! No, you do not feel feelings for Coach. You only have them for Rune. Coach is in the other run. I'm here, though, with others that care about me. I'm really happy. I dry myself with a towel I borrowed from Coach and put my clothes back on. By the time I'm done, Rune and Devin are still changing into their clothes, so I say bye to them and leave the, and leave the locker room. The cafeteria is still half empty when the three of us enter. 
Maybe we're too early? I take out my phone and check the time. It's just a few minutes before... Oh god, 16 o'clock. So the rest should arrive soon. Afternoon light fills the room with a golden glow, giving it a more relaxed atmosphere. Much different than the energetic mood that seemed to, be per seemed to permeate the room during lunch. The voices in the cafeteria seem to be quieter, too. Maybe it's the pain- maybe it's the peacefulness of this place slowly influencing everyone here. Lake is already sitting at our table, together with Jorgen. Garvin! Hey there! Where were you? I was looking for you, but you could, but I couldn't find you anywhere. Hey there, Lake. I was just at the swimming pool. What did you want? Really? We must have missed each other then. I wanted to go to the sauna, but you weren't around. I ended up going with Torolf. He disappeared somewhere after that, too, by the way. The three of the three of us sit down around the table, the sound of chairs scratching against the wooden floor reverberating through the room. Yes, yes, I hear you, Alarm Chan. Alright guys, that is a good place to end it. I want to thank you all so much for watching a new episode of Dawn Chorus Runes Path. We got to see uh, some uh, not not exactly, you know, man meat, but we got to see uh, some muscles. I like that. <laughs> some handsome dudes. Ah, okay, anyway, alright, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!